name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate today the Feast of All Saints. I think it's one of my favorite feast days out of the whole year. Thinking of all of heaven united with us in the prayer, and one day we will join them in that place. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every race, nation, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, Honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord? or who may stand in its holy place. One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So over the last number of weeks, we've been talking about heaven and getting ourselves ready for there. Last week, I gave you a couple of examples of different saints Uh, What we're trying to do when when we think of the saints, we're we're looking and seeing, wow, God can work through pretty much anybody. (laughs) If anybody, if somebody makes themselves available to God's grace, God can take their life and do incredible things with it. 
And that's what the Lord wants to do for us. We, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints today to, in order for us to be able to kind of get it through our brains. We can be saints. So, um, did you, do you know how many saints there are in the church? Not just the ones that are all in heaven, right? But like the ones that the church has actually declared as saints. Ooh, watch this. Ooh, let's move this. I'll close this in first. One... Two, three, ten. <laughs> I didn't want to bring all the books. But there's like ten books that are like this, and each one is like a page, maybe a page and a half for each single saint. It's hot. I thought I would uh, read a couple of stories for you today. I'll read four of them, okay? So it's two men and two women. This is the short, short version that I have on my shelf from my house. This is my mom's version, I think. That I borrowed. <laughs> Maybe she borrowed from me. I can't remember. All right, so I've got four different saints, a little bit different, diverse backgrounds for each one of them. And the point, when you're listening to their stories, I'm, I'm just giving you portions of their stories, but you're listening to go, huh. I could do that, or I could live like that, or I've done something like that. Okay, that's what you're listening for. So the first one here is Francis of Rome, the lady. Okay, Francis with an E-S at the end, not I-S. So this is a woman saying she was a wife and a widow. Okay. Francis was born in Rome in 1384. Her parents were of noble birth, and ample means, and the child was brought up in the midst of luxury, but in a pious household. So kind of like a upper middle class, right? Francis was a precocious little girl, and when she was 11, she asked her parents to allow her to become a nun, only to be met with a point-blank refusal. Her parents had quite different plans for their attractive little daughter. Within a couple of years, they announced to her that they had arranged for her to be betrothed to a young Lorenzo Ponziano, whose position, character, and wealth made him a suitable match. After a time, Francis withdrew her objections, and the marriage was solemnized. At first, she found the new life of marriage very trying. And Canosa, the young wife of Lorenzo's brother Peluso, discovered her one day weeping bitterly. Francis told her of her frustrated hopes and learned to her surprise that this new sister-in-law of hers would also have prefer preferred a life of retirement and prayer. This was the beginning of a close friendship that would lasted until death. And the two young wives strove together henceforth to live a perfect life under a common rule. Plainly dressed, they sallied out to visit the poor of Rome, ministering to their wants and relieving their distress. And their husbands, who were devoted to them, raised no objection to their charities and austerities. They went daily to the hospital nearby to nurse the patients, singling out more particularly those suffering from the most repellent diseases. In 1400, a son was born to Francis, and for a time, she modified her way of life to devote herself to the care of little Jean Baptiste. In all the 40 years that she lived with her husband, there was never the slightest dispute or misunderstanding between them. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what it is. Okay, maybe. <laughs> In addition to the eldest, two other children of Francis are known. A younger boy named Evangelist and a girl, Agnes. Maybe we can get an evangelist in this community at some point. That's a great name. The Ponziani family had always supported the legitimate Pope, and in one of the frequent conflicts, Lorenzo... Um, her husband was stabbed and carried home to Francis, whose devoted nursing he owed to his restoration and health. 
Francis lived in a corner of the ruined home with evangelist Agnes N. Vanoza, whose husband was still a prisoner uh, under the other regimes. And the two women devoted themselves to the care of the children and to relieving as far as their means would allow the sufferings of their poorer neighbors. During another pestilence, three years later, evangelist her son died. Frances then turned part of her house into a hospital, and God rewarded her labors and prayers by bestowing on her the gift of healing. Twelve months after the death of Evangelist, as his mother was praying one day, a bright light suddenly, suddenly shone into the room, and Evangelist appeared accompanied by an archangel. After telling her of his happiness in heaven, he said that he had come to warn her of the impending death of her daughter Agnes. A consolation was, however, to be given to her. The archangel who accompanied Evangelist was therefore to be, become her guide for the next 23 years. He was to be succeeded in the last epoch of her life by another angel of even higher dignity. Very soon, Agnes, her daughter, began to fail, and a year later, she passed away at the age of 16. Her husband, Lorenzo, was now a broken man in his later years, and lived in retirement, being tended with the utmost devotion by his faithful wife. It was his great wish to see his son, Gian Battista, married and settled before his death, and he chose for him a beautiful girl called Mobilia, who proved to have a violent and overbearing temper. She conceived a great contempt for Francis, her mother-in-law, of whom she complained to her husband and his father, and whom she ridiculed in public. In the midst of a bitter speech, she was struck down by a sudden illness, through which she was nursed back to health by Francis. Won by her kindness, Mobilia found her contempt turned to love, and thenceforward she sought to imitate her saintly mother-in-law. By this time, the fame and the virtues of the miracles of, Saint of Francis had spread over Rome, and she was appealed to from all quarters, not only to cure the sick, but also to, dis to settle disputes and heal feuds. She was now able to carry out a project which had taken shape after her husband's death in forming a society of women living in the world and bound by no vows, but pledging to make a simple offering of themselves to God and to serve the poor. Known first as the Oblates of Mary, they were afterwards called the Oblates of Tor de Specchi. That's from the location where they were at. Whatever time she could spare from her home duties, St. Francis spent with the Oblates, sharing in their daily life and duties. One evening in the spring of 1440, though feeling very ill, she tried to get back home after visiting her son and daughter-in-law. On the way, she met her spiritual director, Father Duck John, who, shocked at her appearance, ordered her to return at once to her son's house. It was soon evident that she was dying, but she lingered on for seven more days. On the evening of March 9th, her face was seen to shine with a strange light. The angel has finished his task. He beckons me to follow him, were her last words. Her body was removed to the church of Santa Maria Nuova, and she is buried there in the chapel. Okay, number two. Saint Isidore the farmer. Uh, some of you might know this Isidore already farmers around here, but nonetheless, it's good to hear a good story, huh? The St. Isidore was born in the Spanish capital of Madrid to poor parents, and was christened Isidore after the celebrated Archbishop of Seville. As soon as he was old enough to work, Isidore entered the service of John de Virgus. Virgus. Anybody heard of Virgus before? Still don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so he entered the service of John de Burgess, a wealthy resident of Madrid, as a, as a farm laborer on his estate outside the city. And with that one employer, he remained all his life. 
he married a girl as poor and as good as himself. Isidore's whole life was a model of Christian perfection lived in the world. He would rise early to go to church, and all day long, while his hand guided the plow, he would be communing with God, with his guardian angel, or with the holy saints. Public holidays, he would spend visiting the churches of Madrid and the nearby districts. The saint's generosity to the poor was so great that he was wont to share his meals with them, often reserving for himself only the scraps that were left over. Among the, the numerous stories told of the holy man is one in which illustrates his love for animals. On a snowy winter's day, he was carrying a sack of corn to be ground, and he saw a number of birds perched discontently on the bare branches, obviously unable to find anything to eat. Isidore opened the sack, and in spite of the jeers of his companions, poured out half of its contents upon the ground. When, however, they reached their destination, the sack proved to be still full, and the corn produced double the usual amount of flour. St. Isidore died on May 15, 1130. His wife survived him for several years and, like him, is honored as a saint. You know the, uh, the girl that joined the, the convent from Verndale? Her, her uh, name that she took? Maria Isidore. That's the husband and wife name. St. Wences... Oh, wait. Let's do the last. Okay. St. Zeta. Anybody heard of St. Zeta before? young woman. Zita's parents were devout Christians. Her elder sister afterwards became a nun, and her uncle, Graziano, was a hermit who was locally regarded as a saint. At the age of 12, she went to be a servant of, uh, at, in the town of Luca, eight miles from her native village, in the house of Pagano di Fatanelli, who carried on a wool and silk weaving business. From the outside, from the beginning, she formed the habit of rising during the night for prayer and of attending daily the first Mass at the Church of San Frediano. The good food with which she was provided, she would distribute to the poor, and more often than not, she slept on the ground, having her, having her bed having been given up to a beggar. Her work, indeed, was part of her religion. The children of the family were committed to her care, and she was made housekeeper. In time, Zita became the friend and advisor of the whole house, and the only person who could cope with the master in his rages. But the general veneration with which she was regarded embarrassed her far more than the slights that she had to bear in her earlier years. On the other hand, she found herself relieved of much of her domestic work and free to visit her heart's, to her heart's content the sick, the poor, and the prisoners. She had a special devotion to criminals under sentence of death, on whose behalf she would spend hours of prayer. In such works of mercy and in, in divine contemplation, she spent the evening of her life. She died very peaceably on April 27, 1278, she was 60 years of age and had served the same family for 48 years. Saint Wenceslas, good King Wenceslas. The baptism of the ruler of Bohemia, uh, Boryov, and his wife, uh, Saint Ludmila, was not followed by the conversion of all of their subjects. So in, the, in that time period, the barbarians came through and then they would try to Christianize them. Uh, but the town was not being, they were not changing to Christianity. And many of the powerful Czech families were strongly opposed to the new Christian religion. From the year 915, Duke Borovoy's Bar son, Radislav, governed the whole country. He married a nominally Christian woman, Dramihura, daughter of the chief of the Valencians, and they had two sons, Wenceslas, and Boleslas. 
Saint Ludmilla, his grandmother, who was still living, arranged that the upbringing of Wenceslas might be entrusted to her, and she undertook with the utmost care to form his heart to the love of God. He was still young when his father was killed fighting against uh, the bad guys, and his mother, Drahimira, assumed the government pursuing an anti-Christian or secularist policy. Saint Ludmila, grandmother, afflicted at the public disorders and full of concern for the interest of religion which she and her consort had established with so much difficulty, showed King the Prince Wenceslas the necessity of taking the reins of government into his own hands. Fearing what might happen, two nobles went to his grandmother's castle and there strangled her, so that deprived of her support, Prince Wenceslas would not undertake the government of his people. But he did, and became king. He straightaway announced that he would support God's law and his church, punish murder severely, and endeavor to rule with justice and mercy. When the young prince, now king, married and had a son, his jealous brother, Boleslas, lost his chance of succeeding the throne, and he threw in his lot with the malcontents of the region. In September 929, Wenceslas was invited by his brother, Boleslas, to go to Stara Boleslav to celebrate the feast of its patron saints, Cosmas and Damien. On the evening of the festival, Wenceslas proposed a toast, and his prayers said his prayers and went to bed. Early the next morning, as Wenceslas made his way to Mass, he met his brother Boleslas and stopped to thank him for his hospitality. Boleslas said in reply, Yesterday I did my best to serve you fittingly, but this must be my service today. And he struck him. The brothers closed in and struggled, whereupon friends of Boleslas ran up and killed Wenceslas, who murmured as he fell to the, to the church door, Brother, may God forgive you. At once the young prince was acclaimed by the people as a martyr. Now, I, I chose them all randomly out of there, and I know there's a little bit of length of story and all of that, but... You get this idea, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, all of us have this capacity to live in a way that allows God's grace to transform the world around us. And we have to be open to that. God, what are you asking me of my life? How would you like me to spend my time and my energy so that your will can be done? And when you allow the Lord to do that, you recognize then why there's so many saints in heaven and that we are called to do the same. Stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Heavenly Father hears us, we now bring our prayers before Him. For the Holy Church of God spread throughout the world, that the Lord may raise up within her saints to lead and inspire mankind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who rule and govern, that their hearts may be turned to thoughts of peace, and works of justice. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For each and every member of this community and parish, that, persevering in faith, prayer, and works of charity, we may attain the holiness that God desires for us. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have promised to remember in our prayers, that the Lord may bless them with the gift of his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the many people who are not yet members of the mystical body of Christ, that they may be drawn into conversion and communion. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parishes for whom this holy mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you call us to be saints. You give us living witnesses that, who, like us, have lived in this world and show us how it is done. May we follow the saints through Jesus' grace all the way to heaven. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our great and holy Church of Jesus Christ, the Lord. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe in the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, 
Normally on all the big saints and all of the uh, major solemnities in the life of the church, we'd be singing, singing, singing to the highest level. Since we're not as a group allowed to sing, I'll at least sing the Eucharistic prayer part, but I have to get all the spoken parts in with all of us. Okay? <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us to our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm using the first Eucharistic prayer. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, our bishop, and all those who have COVID, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few different announcements today. Uh, you'll see these booklets that are in the back there. If you'd like to pick one of these up, it's uh, 33 Days to Morning Glory. It's a nice devotional. If you like, if they say it's a little do-it-yourself retreat on the bottom, but it's 33 days in a row, starting this Thursday, I think it's Thursday, November 5th, and going all the way until December 8th, so that on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, the very last day, you're making a consecration of yourself to Mary uh, through this particular devotion. So there's this kind of devotion, and there's also the Louis de Montfort one, which I've done in the past, um, both ending on December 8th. So if you'd like to take one of these home, if you're going to pray it, uh, you're most welcome to do that. We had a nice, generous donor from the parish who offered that. And then on the very last day on December 8th at uh, the Mass at St. Anne's, after Mass is done, then we'll do the consecration there publicly if you have not done it privately on your own. Uh, tomorrow, we will have the All Souls Day Mass at 9 a.m., and so you're most welcome to come up to that. If you, if you still have someone who has cremated remains who wants to get them buried, send them my direction. Um, we'll be doing that privately after the Mass in the morning. This afternoon, we have confirmation, so pray for all of our confirmation kids from our eight parishes. Um, and you heard me mention in the Eucharistic prayer, B uh, Bishop Kettler was scheduled to be here this afternoon, uh, but he... He tested positive for COVID, so we should pray for him, um, pray that he gets better fast. He said that he has mild symptoms, um, and that can always change, of course, uh, but we want to pray for him and pray for his quick recovery. It's nice to have a bishop. We don't want to lose a bishop. We, need, we like having our bishops. Um, and so um, since he's not able to make it, uh, I get to do it, which is kind of exciting, but <laughs> pray for me too. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if, you have whole, if you have water to be made holy, or if you have religious items, meet me in the front after Mass and I'll do the blessing of those. Uh, the bishop asked us as priests to just remind everybody uh, the two things with COVID. It's been a few months since we kind of, uh, you know, just it's good to bring back to the top some of the rules and all of that. Uh, a reminder about masks, wearing masks. If you're exempt, of course, you're exempt, but uh, please do wear masks when you come to Mass. And then Holy Communion, he would, he's asking us to receive on the hand. I'm not going to block anybody from coming forward and receiving communion on the tongue. Uh, but still, nonetheless, it's my job to say what he says. Uh, and then gatherings, this probably is the one that, that is uh, most noticeable, is uh, people that are gathering afterwards and hanging out in the church and talking or on the property and all of that stuff. We're not supposed to do that. There you go. Um, this Friday, we will have the funeral for Virgil Fay um, here at St. Joseph's. It'll be 11 a.m. on Friday morning. The normal mass, the daily mass at St. Anne's, will be suspended, and, and daily mass goers should come to the funeral. On Saturday evening at 8 p.m., we'll have the Hunter's Mass. Uh, so, that's an, they, so that's a Hunter's Mass for anybody that wants to come to that, 8 p.m. It'll be at St. Anne's. It's a new location this year, St. Anne's, 8 p.m. on Saturday night for all you hunters out there. And uh, if you are blessed by what we do and you appreciate what we're doing, if you don't mind donating towards the cause online or in person, we... Oh, I'm supposed to keep remembering to do this. We're going to start using uh, baskets on a handle to actually start doing regular collections again and maintain some good social distancing. So don't be surprised if next weekend we have the baskets ready to go for that. I'm supposed to be ready for it this weekend, but that's my fault. There you go. I think that's everything. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. There are four amens, so let's give them up to God. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen.
so that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted to perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.